Hey YouTube viewers, this is Donnie Smith and welcome to another Eastwood video series. Now in the past videos in this Eastwood series, we've been working on dents, showing you how to locate and repair dents, how to disassemble the parts of a car. In this video, we're going to go over some of the steps that we took to get it ready for paint. You know, some of the minor imperfections, you know, it really wasn't bad enough for body filler. Uh, but still, you know, primer wasn't going to be enough just to fill it and block it out. You know, we applied some putty to those spots. Uh, we've got things like uh, some feather edging to do that we're going to show you about. And uh, final sanding, you know, getting it ready for uh, primer and painting. So we're going to go through all these steps in this video and show you the steps that we took. Okay, if you remember in some of the uh, previous videos, uh, some of the dents that we pulled out and we applied body filler, uh, some of the dents we used a dolly and rolled the dent out and was able to block the paint out and it doesn't need any filler at all. We're just going to prime those areas. But there are a few areas, you know, they don't really need to be taken down to metal and applied body filler. They're just small imperfections and what we're going to do with those is sand those with 180 and apply putty on top of those. Now anywhere you apply putty, you know, glaze putty, you know, it does need to be sanded with at least 180 grit. Anything finer it might not adhere properly. Now the advantages of glaze putty is that it can go on top of different types of surfaces. You know, it can go over sanded paint, you know, as long as it's 180 or the, you know, the different layers of paint and metal, whatever. The body filler, it can go on top of body filler. If you have any pinholes, small imperfections, or, you know, like some of the dents that we worked out, but it needs just a little bit more filling, you know, a little bit more than primer would provide, you know, things like that, it's going to work well. A couple of the disadvantages of using glaze putty is that it is more expensive than body filler. And uh, you can't apply it as thick as you can body filler. Body filler, you know, it's recommended, you know, I've seen it a lot thicker, but it's really not recommended to use more than a quarter of an inch after it's sanded. And uh, glaze putty, you know, you're looking at about an eighth inch. So if you need more than an eighth inch of uh, filling, you know, you're probably going to want to go ahead and use body filler. But for the minor imperfections we have left, you know, we're going to go ahead and apply glaze putty on top of it. Then once we have the glaze applied, we're going to block sand that out with, you can use anywhere from 150 to 180. I think we're using 150 in this video, but uh, if you use one of those, you know, that's going to work well. And don't forget, you know, you can use guide coat through any step, you know, any step you're doing, whether it's in the body filler, the uh, glaze, or even primer. You know, use guide coat. That's going to help you identify lows, highs, or any imperfections that you may have. Also, when sanding glaze, you know, same principles apply. You know, be sure and cross sand that so that you feather those edges out properly. You know, if you just sand in one direction, you know, it's going to take a chance of undercutting and, you know, have problems. So be sure and cross sand. Now we're good at a good point. This is always a step that you kind of step back and you're glad that you have made it to this point. Although this car wasn't too bad. I mean, it didn't have a lot of body work. Everything was pretty minor. But once you get all the body filler block sanded and it's good, you know, glazed putties block sanded, all the body work's basically done. So now you're going to kind of move to the refinish side of this. And the first thing you want to do is feather edge. And what that is, is just to smooth out all the surrounding areas you know you have different scratches in there from the different grits of sandpaper you know you want to make sure all those scratches are minimized by using 220 on a DA and also if there's any paint edges that uh, where you, you had ground or took it taken it to metal you know you want to be sure and layer each layer of paint out because you don't want a, a ridge there you want to smooth that out and layer and you really want each layer of paint each coating to be at least a quarter of an inch and what I mean by that, like your primer, you know, you want to see at least a quarter inch ring of primer and then the base coat and however many layers you have on there, you want to see each layer leveled out. Now, a lot of times when you're, we're using a DA, we're using an interface pad. That's just a soft pad that we put on the DA sander. But, you know, anytime you're trying to level something, like if you have runs, excessive orange peel, or when you're trying to feather edge, you know, you don't want that interface pad on there. You want a hard surface. So just the DA pad alone is gonna, gonna provide a much better feather edge and then trying to use an interface pad. So, so we're gonna get some 220 on a DA, no interface pad, and we're gonna feather edge around all of our bodywork areas, any chips we have, any scratches. You know, we're gonna feather all those out so that we have a nice smooth surface to continue with. So once we get everything feather edged out, now we're ready to final sand. What this is, this is your final step of sanding. And we use four to 600, you know, that's kind of the range depending on your technical data sheet or your preference. 
what we use we use a 500 grit on a da now whenever you're final sanding you do want to use that interface pad because that's going to prevent any sand marks that the da may put in the paint surface so whenever you're final sanding be sure to use the interface pad now that's just what we prefer to do we prefer to use a, a da with 500 grit and an interface pad but you know there are different ways to do that you can wet sand that by hand you know it takes a little bit longer but you can take four to six hundred by hand and, and accomplish the same thing just with a little bit more effort a little bit more elbow grease and a little bit more time now when final sanding with 500 you want to be sure you know sp uh, spend extra attention to your edges because that's what's missed often and if paint is going to peel it's going to peel from the edges many times so make sure you get your edges good but there's there's some edges and some hard to get areas it's hard to get with a with a da sander and that you may have to just sand by hand you know get some 500 grit and sand by hand and we even use after we have final sanded everything we go over everything again and get the edges hard to get area hard to get areas with a red scuff pad you know if you're painting a, a surface you know red's going to work fine if it's just going to be clear coat you want to use the gray but we're painting this whole car so we're going to go over all the car the entire car edges hard to get areas with that red scuff pad just to assure that everything's going to have proper adhesion now the next step we're going to take is sanding the jams now this ain't going to be every job it depends if you're painting the door jams you know under the hood and things like that but we are on this car we're painting everything so all that has to be sanded you know you can't skip the sand steps you know if, if you skip sanding somewhere you know the paint's probably not going to stick it's going to peel so we're going to sand that and what we're doing is we're just sand that by hand you know there's so many curves and areas it's hard to get so we just uh, sand by hand with 500 and then we come back with a scuff pad because there's a lot of hard to get areas a lot of angles and curves you know inside of door jams and you know the, the under the hood and all that then we'll come back with a red scuff pad and make sure that's all scuffed real well but here's a tip for you whenever working on your jams I mean you want to clean everything you know the car that you're working on before you sand but spend some extra time cleaning jams because you know like round door hinges and the latch uh, you know they're real prone to a lot of dirt and contamination uh, oil silicones things like that and you don't want to smear that around so wash it really good with soap and water your jams first and wipe down with some wax and grease remover make sure all that's gone and what we we've even done before in some areas that's uh, got some stuff caked on there you know we'll get a scuff pad with some wax and grease remover and uh, try to make sure all that's gone then we rinse it off and then we'll scuff it you know do our final sanding with 500 and then come back with a scuff pad so make sure any contamination is gone on the jams before you know sanding okay now we've got all of our body work done the car is smooth straight we've got everything feather edged and we have it final sanded and now we're ready to apply some primer surfacer I don't know about you but to me I always like it when I get to that point I feel like I accomplished something you know you are kinda of moving from the the body side to the refinished side so in the next video we're gonna show you the steps we took and we're gonna show you the the primer we're using some Eastwood primer uh, we're using all the Eastwood products as far as paint products. So in upcoming videos, we're going to show you some Eastwood primer, uh, some base coat, clear coat, and uh, we'll go through the steps on that in, in upcoming videos. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Share this with your friends, and we'll see you in the next video.